Good afternoon, members of the members of parliament, support staff, radio listeners, TV viewers, and those viewing by various forms of media. Welcome to this continuation of this meeting of the Committee of Public Health, Social Development, and Labor, the Committee of VSA, number seven of today, Friday, September 2nd, 2022. A special welcome to the Minister of Public Health, Social Development, and Labor, Mr. Omar Atli, and his support staff. We've established a quorum of four factions. Please stand for a moment of silence. Thank you. Who notices? I've received notice of absence from MP William Marlin. Are there any other notifications? That not be the case, we go over to the, two, the agenda point for this meeting. We have the status of the amendment to the ordinance regulating the short-term contract. This is IS-077, and this agenda point was requested by MP George Pantaflet. Before going over to the agenda, it's good to note that today's meeting is a continuation of the meeting which started on June 30th, 2022. During the meeting, agenda point one was adjourned and agenda point, agenda point two, three, and four were closed. To this, today, this meeting is reconvened for the handling of Agenda Point 1, and we go over now to that Agenda Point. On October 1st, 2021, Parliament received a letter from the Member of Parliament, George Pantaflet, with a request that a meeting of the Committee of Public Health, Social Development, and Labor be convened to discuss the status of the amendment of the short-term contract and other label and social-related issues. The presence of the Minister of VSA, Mr. Omar Atli, was also requested, and he is here today. As mentioned, this meeting was called and took place on June 30th, 2022, during which, upon request of the minister, this particular agenda point was adjourned. Before going over to the minister, I would like to give the floor to MP George Pantaflet, the requester of the meeting, to elucidate his request briefly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon to the chair. And colleagues of the committee, of course, mem members of parliament, our Honorable Minister of the Assigned Support Staff, persons that are sitting in the Tribune and those that are listening and, and viewing. Mr. Chairman, you basically gave the intro uh, to what has transpired. As we all know that it has been something like 11 years now ago that um, the National Alliance took an initiative in order to deal with the abuse of the short, what we call a short-term contract. Uh, what we seek to do was to regulate the revolving door problem of sending persons home for three months and then rehiring them again on a new temporary contract. So I am very happy, Mr. Chairman, to see the minister here today with his staff because the fact is we have had many meetings prior to this. We have had um, what you call instability when it comes to government. So therefore, once it is started, it cannot be completed. So I'm very happy, Mr. Chairman, that this minister has now taken it up along with his staff to, to continue and to ensure that this uh, law becomes um, a reality. Um, basically, the meeting of June that was held, indeed, the minister did ask for some more time, and he took the time out to do some traveling and ensure that he get the necessary information in order to get a, a, a complete um, uh, view or understanding as to how it's done in order to come back to Parliament and make sure that the people of St. Martin get the right uh, ordinance as much as possible, which would enable them to have what you call job security. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and I look forward to the presentation from the minister. Thank you, MP Pantaflet, for that elucidation. Um, the minister does have a presentation that he'll be doing today that's already on screen. So I'll give the floor now to the Honorable Minister for the presentation and any other elucidations. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon to the Honorable Members of Parliament, my support staff. Um, I really hope that it's lunchtime. I see a lot of empty seats here, as this topic is a very, very important topic that many of us campaign on year in and year out. And I'm pretty sure the next meeting, the seats will be filled. So I'm pretty, I hope that this is um, a lunch break and we can definitely tackle this matter. But my gratitude to the MPs that are present here. Um, we move to the next slide. Here we have the status of the amendment to the ordinance regulating short-term contracts. We give an overview of the current amendment roadmap in 2011, rightfully said. The National Alliance proposed um, to have permanent positions predefined per sector 
in all business requiring short-term labor contracts would need permission from the government to enter into short-term contracts. After the National Alliance proposal was deemed not feasible by the SER, they had some, some concerns on the manner in which it would be carried out, a new proposal was drafted and developed with a consensus of the social partners. In 2019, Parliament approved the draft, draft legislation, Book 7, Title 10, Civil Code, which was published October 2021. I look at you, MP Sarah Westcott. You are always asking me about this. It will go into effect October 1st, 2022. <laughs> I know that was one of your questions. <laughs> um, we go to the abuse of short-term labor contracts. When we speak of abuse, this commonly refers to employers giving more than three consecutive fixed-term contracts and utilizing the loopholes, as mentioned by MP George Pantaflet, in the legislation to avoid permanency by sending an employee home for three months and a day after their third contract and rehiring them. The current legislation that will be in place by Book 7, Title 1 of the Title 10 of the Civil Code, short-term labor contract, regulated in Article 668A. Employees shall be deemed permanent after their second contract only if there were no gaps more than three months in between contracts or if contracts have exceed a total of 24 months with no intervals more than three months before the before this is instituted, it would be you'll be permanent after three contracts. The amendment made it two. What we look at was Article 614A as implemented in Aruba as well, but this was removed in 2018 by the then minister. Um, 614A was expected to regulate when a temporary contract can be used. However, we see changes in the current or uh, upcoming civil code. We still don't think, not think, we don't believe that it resolved the issue. The problem still remains that employers can send employees home for um, three months and a day and not be in violation of the law. I will um, give an example of this later in the presentation. We touched Curacao for a bit. Curacao employees shall be permanent if they have had more than three contracts with no intervals of leave exceeding three months, which is similar to St. Martin. Also, Curacao, the much popularized, popularized 8020 law did not go into effect. Unfortunately, the governor of Curacao sent it for annulment, even after it was approved by mainly almost everyone. Aruba, employees, shall become permanent if they have more than three consecutive contracts with no intervals of layoff um, exceeding six months. I'll go into the explanation and reasoning behind this. We look, and they also introduced 614A concept in 1992. In the Netherlands, employees shall be permanent if they have more than three contracts with no intervals that does not exceed more than six months, key to um, realize, or has exceeded a period of 24 months. The Netherlands also uses nine and three intervals. I'll explain later. So it's six months with six months off or nine months off on with three months off. They also state if an employee has had several temporary contracts with his employer for more than three years, they become permanent. Here we have a roadmap to the projected amendments by my person and the ministry. And we did an online survey in 2021 to gather data from employees and employers on the abuse of the short-term contract. We thought this survey was important to hear directly from those affected and those that implement these con um, contracts. In 2022, the development, we have a work group that we meet weekly. We are finalizing the proposal and we'll discuss more in depth with our social partners. We keep them involved. We require their feedback and information with questions needed in order to formulate our new consensus or the way forward. The legislation should be 
drafted by 2023. I hope before, but ratification and set in place should be by 2024. I would like to touch on the online survey that we did. We had 222 employees that responded. This is a little off on the screen, so I'll clarify. And 40 employers. But note, these 40 employers represented over 2,200 workers. Very important. Next slide. We asked the employers how many employees are on a fixed short-term contract. 52.5% had a mixed ratio of permanent and temporary. 35% of the businesses had all permanent. 125 of the businesses had 100% of the employees on short-term contracts. We asked the employers, when should a fixed short-term employment contract be regarded as too much? 37.5 said never once the position is of a seasonal or temporary nature. For all positions, there should be a, limited on, a limit on the number of fixed terms contracts. 20% says when there is more than three contracts for a fixed term with no gaps. 5% said more than two contracts with gaps, example, slow season, hurricane season. 17.5% said more than two contracts for a fixed term with no gaps. 5% said more than one contract with gaps of leave, example, slow season, hurricane season. 5% said more than one contract with no gaps, and 10% the answer varied. We also asked the employers, why do you resort to issuing fixed slash short-term contracts? There were 72 respondents. Employers could have picked their first and second answer. Um, here we see 21% says additional labor required for high season. 15% say project-based work. 15% say replacement of workers out on sick leave. 39% said fear of making an inadequate worker permanent and being unable to dismiss them. I would like us to remember this, this, this um, response. Fear of making inadequate worker permanent and being unable to dismiss them when needed. 10% said for trial period to ensure persons are qualified. These were the employer's responses as to when or why you should issue a fixed slash short-term contract. Here are the general statements amongst employers. No job is ever permanent. The word permanent is misleading. Once an employee is doing a good job, they will keep their job. No employer wants to get rid of a good employee. Once an employee becomes permanent, they think they are untouchable. Work hard for two months in a trial period, then start to slack off after they are protected by the law. Most also express that they most also express the need to restructure the dismissal ordinance to make it more flexible to determine and create more competitive labor markets. Then they have no issue with making persons permanent. For those just joining us, those were the remarks of the employers that um, participated in our survey. The employers represented a total of over 2,200 workers. Um, now we move to the employees. We asked the employees, do you think there's a problem with how employers make use of the fixed term contract? 80.6% of the employees said yes. 11.7% said no. 77 had other responses like, I am just happy to be employed, it don't matter. We asked the employees, how many fixed slash short-term contracts have you had in the same company? Here we see 63.5 said one to three, 9% said four to six, 5.4% said six and more, 16.7% said none. There was a total of 19.8% re abuse reported. Some persons had contracts up to 18 contracts for the same employer. General statements of employees. Employers are afraid to make persons permanent in order to be able to fire or terminate them without the red tape. 
again, we see this statement from both employers and employees. Employees are unable to receive loans without permanent employment. This affects our economy. Some employers send employees home for three months without pay and rehire them on a first contract after you had three previous contracts. Some employers have no regard for the law, and if you report, they will fire you. I touch here again on the road map um, that I recently illustrated, because now we go in to the proposals of the ministry and myself. Um, the objective is to reintroduce or introduce Article 614A. The objective is to regulate a short-term labor contract and say it can be used, when it can be used. The first paragraph of this article stipulates that if an employer wants to hire an employee temporarily, this can only be done on the basis of a fixed term, of a written fixed term employment contract. The second paragraph determines the circumstance which the fixed term employment contract may be entered. Example, an employment contract can only be entered into for a definite period if it is necessary to meet the need for temporary workers which needs exist only in a part of the calendar year and arises from the increase in activity in the company during that period. B, relates to the replacement of one or more temporarily absent employees. C, relates to the execution of precisely defined work or project. Or D, relates to the performance of casual or irregular work. In our proposal, I just listed the whole um, article, but we will deem to remove D, because casual work is defined as higher on an as-need basis for peak periods, which is equivalent to your high season. We also, have, we also propose a legal counsel project to strengthen the labor compliance at the Department of the Labor Affair with a legal representative that will provide legal advice to both employees and employers and on labor-related labor issues, and particularly as it relates to abuse of short-term contract. See, as stated in the Civil Code Article 678, many employers may not be aware of the many urgent reasons you can dismiss someone. What we also realize, we need to see and educate the employers and also the employees on their rights in Article 679 in the Civil Code. More stringent consequences can be implemented, and this was also advised by the said, for violators. Possible revoking of business license for repeated violations and uh, compensation for employees for money owed. What we propose is to adapt um, permanent contracts after three years of temporary contracts. An employee automatically receives a permanent contract if she or he has received multiple temporary contracts for a contractual period totaling three years slash 36 months with the same employer or for the same type of work with successive employers. Example. If an employee first works through an employment agency and later directly at the employer, they will be considered, that time would be added and they will be considered for permanency. If an employee has had several temporary contracts with the same employer for three years or more, he or she shall become permanent. I would like to exemplify why and how we think this new proposal will work in accordance with the law and being fair to all parties. Here is an example. John receives his first contract January 1st, 2020 to December 31st, 2021. This is a one-year contract. He receives his second contract January 2021 to December 1st. So John has two consecutive contracts. Based on the current law, he is expected that his next contract will be a permanent one. Also, based on the current law, if he exceeds a period of 24 months, which he has, his next contract should be permanent. The problem is 
we don't live in a perfect world. The reality is some, I, my key word, some employers will lay John off for three months in a day and bring him back on March 2nd, 2023 and renew the process. So although we have amendments made that will shorten the amount of consecutive contracts, it still does not curb the abuse. Another example to exemplify why Aruba and the Netherlands may use six months. Here we have contract one from November in the high season to April 3rd. The person is hired for six months, then laid off for six months. If you are laid off for six months, you will realize the time you are rehired is exactly the same as your first contract. The second contract will be November 1st to April 3rd, 2022. The person is then laid off for six months and hired back on his third contract, November 1st to April 30th. What this exemplifies, it's seasonal work. Under the new proposal, this is allowed to be considered because in the law it says seasonal work is considered work at a specific period of time. The fact that we use three months in itself causes a violation. Here is a prime and main example of how you look at it. October 1st, on November 1st, a person received their first contract. It ends in April 30th. They receive a successive contract May 1st. It ends on October 31st, 2002. Their next contract is supposed to be permanent, but what we do, we send them home for three months in a day. We hire them February 2nd, 2022 to July 30th, 2023. And no, 2022. Hire them again in August till January. Send them home for three months in a day again. Hire them in May to August. Give them a successive contract November to August. Send them home again. Hire them. Now, actually, based on the current law, this employer is not in violation. But this employee has received seven contracts. So if we total the amount with the propose that we are proposing within the ministry, this person has a total of 14 months, which is three working, contractual, we only count the contractual time working, which is three years and six months, which means under the new proposal, this person is deemed permanent. We are also looking into flex security, as we, as we stated. We do take consideration all stakeholders and have dialogue with our partners. The proposal presented is not intended to create more stringent labor laws that hamper complaints, hamper compliant businesses, nor will it completely tackle the abuse of employ by employers. Flexibility within the labor market is still the main objective, while also ensuring security protection for the employees. The intention is to not solely focus on legislative amendments to the civil code as it relates to short-term contracts. Upon taking office, my vision has always been flexibility, flex security, creating a balance between flexibility and security. Therefore, in addition to the legislative amendments to the civil code and increasing awareness of employers and employees' rights and obligations is essential. The intention is to bring these amendments package with the amendments to the dismissal law, amended to the amendment to the national ordinance regulating foreign workers and the unemployment fund legislation. That is the intention of us and the ministry to tackle it simultaneously. A total reform package that together with the social partners will move our country forward. In addition, we will embark on a campaign to inform employers and employees on the urgent reasons for dismissals, as we stated in Article 6, 7, 8 of Book 7, Title 10, and 6, 7, 9. Coincidentally, the said report of 2014 aligns with these visions. Among other recommendation was to revise the dismissal law and regulation, as we stated, and strict enforcement of the existing rules regarding temporary labor contract. Mr. Chairman, I reach the end of my presentation. I thank you and I look forward to any questions from the members of Parliament.
Thank you, um, Minister, for that presentation. I think you have gone um, into the topic quite well, but um, I can anticipate that there may be some additional questions from members of the committee. So, members of Parliament, you can use our digital speakers list to sign in to indicate, and we do have one speaker signed in already, that's MP Westcott-Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to our staff. Good afternoon to the minister and his staff. Good afternoon to those in the Tribune. Good afternoon to all tuned in to this meeting. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank the minister for his presentation, which I've understood that we have received. Thank you for that. Based on what the minister has presented, Mr. Chairman, I have just a few questions, and the first one being whether the minister can provide us with um, the latest labor statistics, um, persons filing for jobs, um, dismissals, um, any idea with respect to up-to-date unemployment figures, so any labor statistics that the ministry and departments have, if these can be shared with Parliament, please. In addition to that, I would like to ask the minister if he could give us an update with respect to the analysis of the labor market that is supposed to be taking place as part of the country package E1. Where do things stand right now? As the minister would recall, this particular measure in the this particular measure in the country package speaks of an analysis to be conducted after which matters such as and a, a slew of measures is mentioned, but one of them definitely being the, the matter of contracts. So again, on the E1, an analysis of the labor market policy legislation, et cetera, is mentioned. And that measure in the country package continues to state that with that information from that measure, then things like contracts for definite period of times, et cetera, et cetera, will be addressed. So very specifically, where are things right now as it stands with E1 of the country package, the analysis of the labor market? Mr. Chairman, uh, recently or over the past months or so, we have heard several policy intentions, if that profound as a policy, but several intentions of the Minister of Justice where it pertains to persons, their stay or overstay on the island. And the Minister in one of her, the Minister of Justice latest presentations on that alluded to the possibility of a sought over, although she did not want to call it that, I'm paraphrasing the minister herself, sort of a gray period type of an operation. Is the ministry of VSA in any way involved in discussions with the minister of justice where this particular intention as expressed by the minister of justice is concerned? The Does the ministry have, still sticking on the topic of labor, does the Minister of Justice have any update to be given on the agreement, the MOU, with the Royal Caribbean Group with respect to creating openings for persons on St. Martin's? So do we have any, any numbers of persons who have applied, persons who might have gotten a job. Do we have any update? I know it's not that long ago, a few months, maybe f about four months, but do, is there anything to report as far as that MOU is concerned? Mr. Chairman, we just recently, there was this quite a, 
um, an extensive listing of available jobs by the company Balas Nadam. Many um, tradesmen and women were being, um, are being looked for. And my question is whether this is being done in collaboration with um, our labor, our labor department. Mr. Chairman, I think that's that's it for my you no know, one one last one, and that is the I took note of the minister's um, the minister's view thinking view and thinking on the matter of how moving forward with the with the issue of short term contracts and the like, and the minister constantly referred, which I think is a good thing by the way, huh? um, that the continuation of these discussions will take place or will continue to take place in consultation with the social partners. I just want to make sure that when the minister says this or alludes to this, it is with um, in a type of a formal tripartite setting. That's what I want to that's what I want to get at, in which the opinions and ideas of all are respected, discussed, to at the end come out with uh, an understanding, an agreement that would be in the interest of all. So I just want to make sure that this reference to social partners is an ongoing part of the kind of tripartite discussions that need to take place. As the minister would recall, the latest amendment to the to the civil code where labor is concerned, labor contract is concerned, is one that actually came from a consensus document signed between social partners and part of the agreement when those decisions were arrived at by the government and the social partners was that the entire matter of the labor market will continue to be looked at. So adding that just to find out if that is the kind of consultation, tripartite setting, formal tripartite consultation that the minister is referring to in his presentation. Other than that, I thank the minister for his elaboration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, MP Westcott Williams. Next on our speakers list, we have MP Pantaflet. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank the minister also for the presentation. I believe that it shows that the minister is hard at work as, as to how to address this issue of the abuse of Book 7, Title 10 of the Civil Code of the talks about the short-term contract. Mr. Chairman, um, I was hoping to get a presentation to have a look at it because some of the things that the minister brought up there are very important, and I don't want to um, just ask any question for asking questions' sake. I want to make sure to digest the document because the points that have been brought in regards to the 80% um, <clears throat> when it comes to the employees and also the 32%, you could see the issue of the disparity between the employers and the employees as to indeed how this, the present, the present, um, let's say, labor contract where you can be sent home three months and then return again is definitely hurting um, not only the employees, but also the economy of St. Martin. So I just want to read the, the presentation itself, Mr. Chairman, and then I see exactly how to go forward. But at the moment, what I've seen thus far, I definitely appreciate the effort that the minister is making finally to, in order to <clears throat> get this matter solved once and for all. What I want to see, Mr. Chairman, going forward is that indeed, finally, it is only applied to seasonal employees, seasonal, because it, it was very um, scary to see exactly when the minister presented that someone could be working 14, 15 years on contrast consecutively for the same company. And this is quote unquote so-called legal because the laws have not been amended. So again, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank the minister and his staff and continue doing this because it is 11 years in the making. It doesn't happen overnight, but it is good that right now effort is being making, taken in order to ensure that the people of St. Martin, the workers of St. Martin, are treated properly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, MP Pantaflet. Next, MP Richardson. 
Good afternoon to the minister and his staff. Good afternoon to the members of parliament, persons in the tribune and TV, radio listeners. I would like to thank the minister also for his presentation. However, we did not receive the presentation as yet, so I would not be able to yes. ask um, any Richardson, questions. If I, just to um, elucidate, indeed, the presentation was sent to Parliament, however, not to, let's say, the, the normal email we would do. So that is currently being booked in, and that should be with members of Parliament as soon as possible. MP Richardson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. However, we would have to be able to look through and see what is also in that proposal, and then we can have our questions made. However, I'd like the minister to look into this for us and the workers. Um, there's a number of people is complaining that they're working with companies and they are not being insured. So I'd like you to look into this as much as possible, whether you're gonna do a survey to see how many persons is working and not being insured or given an insurance by the company. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, MP Richardson, and next we have MP Gums. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon to you and Fafir, the minister and his staff, and those joining us. Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't really have a specific question per se. The minister actually kind of stole, um, well, already said that he's looking at the SARE um, report, but I would maybe like if it's possible for him to elaborate a bit more on what, from that report, he has taken up into the considerations for this um, law. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, be gums, and we don't want the minister to be accused of uh, <laughs> stealing nothing. <laughs> um, we will go then to the next speaker, MP Bijlani. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to the Honorable Minister and the support staff, and good afternoon to my colleagues. Minister, through you, Chairman, can you just go on the slide where you had the examples of the, yeah, I believe on the second part there, May 1st to 2021 till October 31st, 2022, and again you're putting the February 2nd, 2022. Are the dates correct there? Something, I'm either that should be 2021, the yes, second yes, contract, correct. or because the third contract should be 2023. Correct, correct. So, so there's a, there's so a mistake there, in there. There is a discrepancy, but not in the, in the length. Is a discrepancy within the, the end of the year, because six months, you are correct, would be 2021. But the example itself, there is an error. Thank you for pointing that out. When I was That's reading That's an it, error, right? Yeah. Okay. But, but I don't want to, but it don't change the concept. No, the concept I understood, MB, MB I was MB thinking MB about the error. Let's go one at a time, MP Bishlani. So thank, <laughs> sorry for that. Thank you no for problem. pointing that out. Okay, the other part of the survey, I would like to know if we have done it through industry-wise, like all the industries, what we have here, tourism-related, local-related, whatever is based, all your surveys, the reports, what you've given, are they based on the industry? And the other point, I would like to know what are the pros and cons for dismissal law? Why are people afraid with dismissal law if you are working good, no employer is stupid to fire you. Thank you. Thank you, MP Bijlani. Are there any other speakers? I don't see none on the speakers list at this time. Uh, Minister, I just have one additional question I would like to pose to you um, from a bit of a different perspective, and that would be, uh, does the ministry see certain instances where uh, we, we talk a lot about the abuse of the short-term labor contracts, and I'm very happy to see that you are uh, making some sincere efforts to change that. Um, but can the ministry maybe explain instances where short-term labor contracts are necessary in certain industries or in certain situations, um, maybe also for the labor market and the public to understand that there may be some situations where uh, a short-term labor contract might be viable even for the employee. It might be even preferable to the employee that travels, um, the maritime sector, you might see some of that. Um, so just to indicate maybe where those instances are and how we can still have a system that allows uh, 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 you know, a fair way for those that do want a six-month contract or a short-term ter short contract to still have the ability to enjoy that over several years without them having been tied to a permanent contract that they themselves might not um, actually want. Um, that would be, did we have a sign? No. 
Um, that would be all at this time, um, members of the committee. Um, the minister has a few questions that was posed to him. I will adjourn for three minutes so I can caucus with the minister on the way forward. Good afternoon once again. Uh, the minister just uh, indicated that he needs 10 minutes, so we will adjourn until 2.15, yes, quarter past two, to return with the answers to the questions. Meeting adjourned until 2.15.
Good afternoon once again, members of the committee. Um, the Honorable Minister is here to answer your questions. So, Minister, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Answer the first question. Well, the first request of MP Sarah Westcott is to provide the latest labor statistics for job dismissals, unemployment figures, and more. Um, definitely, this can be sent to the members of Parliament. Um, MP Westcott asks, can you provide an update on the analysis of the labor market that was supposed to take place during the country package E1? Um, MP and MPs, we have received the preliminary findings. Um, we are now awaiting the final report. As soon as this report is final, we will definitely share with the members of parliament. Um, Speaking of the country measures, it, this will tie into her next question, the MP's next question regarding the covenant with the Ministry of Justice and Ministry of ASR regarding the grace period. One of the major complaints realized from country package E3 is that businesses state that they hire illegal hiring of foreign employment is due to the stringent and timely process it takes to get work permits and labor permits. So taking that into consideration, we have created a one-stop shop, basically where you would fill one form and simultaneously while we do the work permit, we will start on your residency permit. Um, this is in process. We have had meetings. Um, all of the applications would be sent through the VSA department and we'll start there. Next question from MP Westcott. Does the minister have an update on the Royal Caribbean Group and the numbers? Um, as stated um, publicly, we have had um, over 127, about 127 persons that showed up to the job fair in, um, at Bel Air. We are still awaiting the final numbers on the amount of people that applied online and the amount of people that have been employed. Personally, I personally know some persons that are still awaiting finalization of their contract to be employed. Once this is finalized, we will share publicly and with the members of parliament. Please confirm if the social partners referred to is done in a tripartite setting. Yes, MP, um, even with our analysis, in our meetings, um, Ms. Frosten would send emails asking the opinions of both the union rep and the business rep for their analysis and feedback, and hence the reason we try to find a balanced approach. MP Gums, please summarize what from the report, the said report, you actually have taken up. Well, MP Gums, the revision of the dismissal procedure regulations, strict enforcement of existing rules regarding temporary labor contract, and the establishment of the unemployment fund. Those are definitely the major aspects that we have taken up from the said report. MP Bejani asks, um, what sectors did we um, did par participated in our survey? Um, the hospitality sector, banking, finance, insurance sector, healthcare, retail, retail and wholesale, aviation, telecommunication, construction. So it varied. Um, casino and majority from the hospitality sector. What are the pros and cons of the dismissal law? Well, many, it, it, it's how you look at it. Um, you would have the employers saying, for instance, the stringent measures of sending the request to the SG and having to have that response from the government on if you can let the person go or not. And also in having the discussions actually today with representative of the business community, um, the costs connected to laying off a permanent employee. Um, some of the pros are it creates a balance is there to limit or try limit abuse of power and create um, some sort of a fair work environment. The key is now for both employers and employees to understand their rights and take the time and know the civil code. So again, I would refer all employees to Article 678 of the civil code 
all employers to 678 and all employees to 679 of the Civil Code. MP Bryson, does the ministry see, see certain instances where um, short-term and labor contracts are necessary? We do, and we do understand that it is necessary, MP, and that's where we think 614A would then regulate. We're not doing away with it, but 614A would then regulate when a fixed slash short-term contract can be used. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Minister, for the answers to the questions. I see a follow-up question from MP George Pantaflet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes. oh, I think the Minister uh, has one more answer. Uh, yes, um, MP Hyson Richardson asked about employers that have employees that are not um, insured. Um, we will look into this. What we do advise is that, again, it's based on your CLA. Some persons are required, some persons receive payment in full and in their agreement are required to take care of their insurance. However, what we do notice is that, and this was brought up by the Minister of Justice during her controls, is that we would see a lot of employees who, uh, employers who take the taxes or the insurance fee from the employees and are not paying it. We are asking employees to come forward. We are asking them. Uh, many persons are afraid of losing their job. That is the biggest thing that we see. But if we don't know, we can't assist. And that is actually the honest truth. So we are asking persons to have faith in the Labor Department and come forward and let us know, and then we will take it from there. That's it. Uh, now we go back to MP Pantaflet. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you again, um, Minister, for the answers and explanation to the question that were posed by colleagues of mine, not necessarily my person. Um, I think one of the issues that we're dealing with has to do with the issue of compliance, and why I mentioned that is, again, you know, if, if government don't have enough staffing to do the job properly, it's very difficult. I have to add on to my, what my colleague, MP Richardson, mentioned, I also have complaints with regards to pay slips, because the law talks about pay slips, but um, there are persons who, and in this case, undocumented persons, who want to regulate their status, but the fact is the employer refuses to give them pay slips. They use the famous brown envelope with an amount, and that's it. You know, so again, um, what do they do? Because they're undocumented in this case, and they're afraid now to go to the authority because they don't have any, any documents. So, but how, how do we get to, uh, when the controls are taking place, like have been, has happened in the past between the Minister of Justice, I mean, sorry, with the Minister of Justice and TIAT as to businesses complying with business licenses and so on, do they, doing the control, also look to ensure that they also have pay slips which they give to the employees in order so that we can keep a track as to who's paying the AOV and who's paying the, their taxes? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and I'll allow the minister to answer. Thank correctly. you very much, um, MP George, on the matter of pay slips. In the current civil code, it is required to provide pay slip. It is law. Um, I think with the amendment, it now you can do it digitally. So that is also allowed. One of the recommendations in the preliminary findings is to increase the um, inspectorate of VSA um, of employment to ensure that um, businesses are compliant. Of course, we have thousands of businesses on St. Martin, so it's hard. And that's where it goes back to we need the assistance of the employee. Um, sometimes we see employees wait till it's too late, and then um, it, we choose to rather, you know, go to the, the Facebook as, as opposed to the correct route. So we encourage everyone, I know I have during, throughout my tenure, to encourage everyone, if you have issues, please um, bring it to the Labor Department, and they would assess it and let you know whether you have claims or not. Okay, we go to the next Member of Parliament, MP Richardson. Good afternoon. Thank you, Minister, for your answer. I stepped outside just a while ago, and the same question I asked you, there was two ladies on the outside, and that's the same thing she said. I'm been working for a company, and I told her we should have to go and report this. I've been working for a company for so long now, and I can't get 
my SZV. So, Minister, this is a hot topic. Just like the six months contract amendments 12 years ago, we need you to look in this urgently and take care of the people of St. Martin, the workers that is hurting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Minister, if you want to comment. Okay, sure. And then I would add, if in your closing, maybe you could make a short remark, uh, kind of ties into some of what I heard in terms of those that are undocumented. I heard an announcement of a protocol between the Ministry of Justice and VSA to help kind of create some sort of grace period, if you would like to comment on that as well. And then if there's no other questions, then we'll go straight into your closing. Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, Honorable Member of Parliament, I send Richardson, you are correct. Um, I, too, have personally been approached by persons that have the same concern. And then when I would tell them, okay, let's the, the correct channels, they say, no, I don't want to because I don't want to lose my job. So that is a battle that we are facing. Um, so as um, public figures, members of the community, we can only encourage. And as minister, I directly can't go to a business and do anything. There are channels I need to take. And I would advise anyone to take that correct channels. Um, they are available in the government building, so I do encourage you. MP Bryson, yes, indeed, the, the grace period, what you are speaking of, is normally um, a person that is applying needs to be out of the country. What we realize is that we want to do decrease the illegal employment of foreign workers. There are persons who have been here for years that have contributed to the tax system that have paid their fair share and a lot of and have gotten the bad end of the stick so what we have created is this grace period in which we will not only help facilitate this one-stop shop but if you do not comply during this grace period then you basically have no excuse and therefore penalties might be more stringent there will be a zero tolerance policy thank you would you like him to repeat or you have you want to um, and be Georgian, go ahead. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make plain you're talking about the employers. The grace period is for the uh, so called grace is for the employers to file for them. Okay, yes, because um, I'm being asked now, yes, but suppose they don't file still, what happens to the employer if he doesn't file? What happens to the employer? You know, so it goes on and on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you. Um, Minister, I'd like to thank you for your attendance in this meeting and the elucidations that you've given um, to the uh, labor situation and short-term contracts. I think, uh, personally, if I would say, I think you're on the right track legislatively. I see a lot of potential for this to be a balance between the labor market and the business market, uh, opportunities for those that do require a, a short-term contract having it. Uh, we look forward to that legislation making its way to Parliament sometime and where it can be debated further. With that, members of Parliament, I hereby close this committee of ASA meeting. Meeting closed.